As we mentioned before, Congress narrowly averted a government shutdown by passing a bill that funds the federal government for the next 45 days. But because that deal was reached, the infighting in the Republican Party is getting out of hand, some would say, with the future of Kevin McCarthy's speakership now on the line. For more on this, we are joined by Niall Stanich, White House columnist at The Hill. Niall, thanks for staying with us. Good to be with you, Natasha. So Congressman Matt Gates making it very clear today that he plans to call for McCarthy's remover, a removal rather, as speaker. McCarthy, however, not backing down. Let's listen to that exchange. I intend to file a motion to vacate against Speaker McCarthy this week. I think we need to this rip week. off the Band-Aid. I think we need to move on with new leadership that can be trustworthy. So be it. Bring it on. Let's get over with it and let's start governing. If he's upset because he tried to push us in a shutdown and I made sure government didn't shut down, then let's have that fight. Niall, where do you see this fight heading? What is the likely outcome from where you're sitting now? There's clearly a lot of bad blood between Congressman Gates and Speaker McCarthy. And the Congressman has been trying to depose Kevin McCarthy, or at least has that added something of an aspiration to do that for quite some time. Now, it appears that Congressman Gates is moving forward with this motion to vacate. Kevin McCarthy did get through the shutdown issue with this compromise, but clearly not out of the woods yet by any means. The motion to vacate poses a real danger to his speakership. You know, among the items not included in the stopgap bill is additional funding for Ukraine. I know we touched on this last night briefly and the southern border as well. Um, President Biden says that American aid for Ukraine will continue, but I want to ask about that. Will we see that done with separate legislation or will this come up again in the next 45 days? So it would seem likely that it will have to be addressed by the time the 45 days elapses. Now, the most likely vehicle as it stands right now is some sort of supplemental funding. The Ukraine issue is important to this Republican infighting that we're talking about because Congressman Gates is accusing Speaker McCarthy of having made some kind of side deal with Democrats on that topic. Basically, it seems like Democrats are fairly confident there will ultimately be Ukraine funding after this pause. And that leaves those who are opposed to Ukraine funding within the Republican conference obviously very unhappy. Niall, I do want to move quickly to the 2024 race. Um, there is a new report this weekend that says that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will soon be running as an independent. Um, he is currently running as a Democrat, as we know, but polling well behind the president in the polls. Could an independent run like this impact Biden's poll results akin to Ross Perot's 1992 bid against Bill Clinton and incumbent George H.W. Bush? So it's interesting you raised the uh, precedent of Ross Perot because there is to this day some debate about what effect Ross Perot actually had or who he took votes away from. Now, in Robert F. Kennedy's case, you might think on a kind of a surface level, well, he's a Kennedy and he was running as a Democrat, but he's got actually more admiration from Republican voters than Democratic voters. He's very out of step with where most voters in the Democratic Party are. He's a hero to some, but an anti-hero to a lot more. So I think that is a real problem for him. If he runs as an independent, do some of those conservatives who have grown to like him over the past couple of months, do they move to his side of the ledger? Uh, likely a, um, a, a positive thing for the Biden campaign, or could this potentially hurt them? It could be a positive thing for them, I think, overall, because there is the perhaps the possibility that Robert F. Kennedy, because he's such an anti-establishment figure, could take some of those uh, votes that often uh, President, former President Trump has, take, has got in previous cycles, where it's a, a sort of a disenchanted vote or an anti-establishment vote. It's a, a rebellious vote. Some of that could perhaps be siphoned off to Robert, by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I'm not sure that many Democrats are really going to vote for Kennedy. He has plateaued in polls running against Biden at about 10 or 12 percent. All right. Really appreciate those insights. Niall Stanich, thank you so much for your time tonight. Have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.